is grotesque, the comedic crime fiction of Joyce Porter. It's by Chris Chan, and it's published by Level Best Books. Joyce Porter is the funniest crime writer you've never heard of until now. Creator of DCI, Wilfred Dover, Scotland Yard's laziest and rudest detective, Eddie Brown, a schoolteacher forced into Cold War spycraft against his will, and Constance Ethel Morrison Burke, the Han Khan, a boisterous noblewoman turned private eye. Porter filled her mysteries with outrageous situations sparkling dialogue, and over-the-top humor. This tribute to her works is for mystery lovers who enjoy laughing while they piece together clues. I have not read Chris Chan before, and I really don't recall reading anything about Joyce Porter. This is going to be a whole new adventure. I'm going to do some research and see if I can't find some of these books. They may be out of print. I don't know how long ago. You know who will know? Chris Chan, and we'll talk to him about it at Mathis. Next up is The Irish Assassin, Conspiracy, Revenge, and the Phoenix Park Murders that Stunned Victorian England by Julie Cavanaugh. It came out August 3rd, 2021 by Atlantic Monthly Press. In a story that spans Donegal, Dublin, London, Paris, New York, Cape Town, Julie Cavanaugh thrillingly traces the crucial events that came before and after the murders. From the adulterous affair that caused Parnell's downfall to Queen Victoria's prurient obsession with the assassinations and the investigation spearheaded by Superintendent John Mallon, also known as the Irish Sherlock Holmes. We look forward to talking to Julie about this. It sounds fascinating. Yes, it does. The other book in this category is called How to Write a Mystery, a handbook from Mystery Writers of America by Mystery Writers of America with editors Lee Child and Lori R. King. And that came out from Simon and Schuster. The other, the other book in the category is The Combat Zone, Murder, Race, and the Boston Struggle for Justice by Jan Brogan. We interviewed her just recently, so go back and listen. That is a very fascinating story. Yes, it is. Well, that's best nonfiction. And then our last category of books is best children or young adult mysteries. And the first one is Cold Blooded Murder. It is Myrtle Hardcastle Mystery Number Three. It's by Elizabeth C. Bunce. It came out October 2021 by Algonquin Young Readers. When the proprietor of Leighton's Mercantile is found dead on the morning his annual Christmas shop display is about to be unveiled, it's clear a killer had revenge in mind. But who would want to kill the local dry goods merchant? Perhaps someone who remembers the mysterious scandal that destroyed his career as a professor and archaeologist. When the killer strikes again, each time manipulating the figures in the display to foretell the crime, Myrtle finds herself racing to uncover the long-buried facts of a cold case and the motivation of a modern murderer. That sounds rather good. Next up is The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Herr. It came out... April 20th, 2021, by Fuel and Friends. And this one sounds really good, and I think I'm going to read it. Hawani's family has never been the same since she and her younger sister went missing and were later found unconscious in the forest, near a gruesome crime scene. The only thing they remember? Their captors wore a painted white mask. To escape the haunting memories of the incident, the family flees their hometown. 
Years later, Detective Min, Hawani's father, learns the 13 girls have recently disappeared under similar circumstances. And so he returns to their hometown to investigate, only to vanish as well. Determined to find her father and solve the case that tore their family apart, Hawani returns home to pick up the trail. As she digs into the secrets of the small village and reconnects with her now estranged sister, Hawani comes to realize that the answer lies within her own buried memories of what happened in the forest all those years ago. Ooh. That, that sounds, sounds Ooh, good. I got to read this book. <laughs> Obviously isn't for a little kids. No, I play one on TV. You do. <laughs> it's the name of our next book. It's by Alan Orloff. It came out in July of 2021 from Down and Out Books. All's great for 16-year-old actor Dalton Black as he portrays a teen killer on a crime reenactment show. That is, until he realizes someone is stalking him. When that someone turns out to be Homer Lee Varney, the man convicted of the murder, things take a dark turn and Dalton is afraid for his life. What does Varney want? Some sort of twisted revenge or something even worse? That sounds good too. See, children's books no, are really no. up in their game. Yeah. Next up is Leisha's Song by Lynn Slaughter. It came out in June of 2021 by Fire and Ice Young Adult Books. Leisha knows something's wrong. Her beloved vocal coach at boarding school would never have resigned and disappeared like this in the midst of preparing her prize student for a major vocal competition. Leisha's determined to find her, make sure she's okay. Cody, a sensitive cellist, insists on helping her. Sparks fly, clues multiply, and romance blossoms, despite the disapproval of their families. Leisha's desire to be with Cody and pursue music rather than medicine puts her on a direct collision course with her African-American father, the only parent she's ever had. But even more immediate threat looms because as Leisha draws closer to the truth about her teacher's disappearance, she puts her own life in grave danger. Another song. Yeah, wow. And the final book is called Enola Holmes and the Black Baroche. It came out August 31st of last year by Wednesday Books. Enola Holmes is the much younger sister of her more famous brothers, Sherlock and Mycroft. But she has all the wits, skills, sleuthing inclinations of them both. At 15, she's an independent young woman. After all, her name spelled backwards reads alone and living on her own in London. When a young professional woman, Miss Letitia Glover, shows up on Sherlock's doorstep, Desperate to learn more about the fate of her twin sister, it is Enola who steps up. It seems her sister, the former Felicity Glover, married the Earl of Dunhench, and per a curt note from the Earl, has died. But Letitia Glover is convinced this isn't the truth, that she'd know she would feel if her twin had died. That's another one. I've got to read this. My goodness. I just, I need to quit my job and just read. <laughs> well, I retired and I still don't have time to read all this. <laughs> and our final category, we need to honor the people nominated for best short story. A Family Matter by Barb Goffman, Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine, January, February, 2021. A Tale of Two Sisters by Barb Goffman again in Murder on the Beach, Destination Murders. Docks at Midnight by Richie Navarez in Midnight Hour, Crooked Lane Books. The Locked Room Library 
by Gigi Pandian, Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine, July, August, 2021. Bay of Reckoning by Sean Riley Simmons and Murder on the Beach, Destination Murders. And speaking of Sean, she is one of the hardest working women when it comes to malice. We know that she will not be there this year due to some health issues. And I know she's going to miss being there, but I think all of us are going to miss her not being there. She is such a ray of sunshine. And we send her love and healing thoughts that she gets better soon. We'll see her next year anyway. That's for sure. Well, that is our rundown of nominees. And the next time we talk to you, we will be announcing the winners and telling you all about how fabulous Malice was. Yes. So if you can't be there, be sure and listen next week anyway. We will bring you along with us. Yes, we will. That wraps up our Malice prequel. The next time we talk, Malice will be over for another year. We thank you for listening. And if you haven't listened to our last week's program, we are still spinning from the reaction to our program with Joel Schwartz, who is the attorney and author of the book Bone Deep about the Betsy Faria Pam Hupp case that's been on television and Dateline, you name it, and it's still in the news. So be sure and go back and listen to that because that's one of our really good episodes. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye. Bye.